Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am Krista Burns, your host at the Nebraska Library Commission. Um, Encompass Live is the Library Commission's weekly online event where we cover any sort of activities that might be of interest to Nebraska librarians across the state. Um, we do these sessions every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time for an hour. They're free and they are recorded, so if you can't attend any of our live sessions, you can watch a lot of all of our recordings online. Uh, we do a mixture of presentations, interviews, book reviews, tour, web tours of different products, anything we can think of or come up with that might be of interest to people. Um, we do sessions with commission staff, and we have guest speakers like we have today. Well, kind of a mixture. <laughs> <laughs> Combination. <laughs> yeah. Um, today, um, we have a very cool, interesting program that, um, that we're going to be talking about, or you'll be presenting about. Um, Erica Hamilton, um, the coordinator of Primetime, a program from the Nebraska Humanities Council, is going to be talking um, about that. And I'll just let you go ahead and take over and do your thing and uh, tell us all about it. Okay. Just take this over, and I will pass you the mouse. And you are good to go. <laughs> Well, as Krista said, I'm Erica Hamilton. I'm a senior program officer with the Nebraska Humanities Council. And I've been working with Primetime Family Reading Time since 2005. It actually began in 2004. What Primetime is... There we go. Primetime is a six-week um, humanities-based storytelling, reading, and discussion program that is primarily held in public libraries, but it's also been held in um, elementary schools and in other public venues. Um, and it's offered to schools and other public venues when a public library either doesn't have a space or doesn't have a um, schedule to fit it in. Um, we do like libraries to be involved, though, if it is in the school or in the public venue. Primetime, um, this, this is what um, a typical primetime session looks like. We start with a meal, and that's because with primetime we like to break down any barriers um, that might prevent a family from attending. A lot of the time, primetime is in the evening. It starts at 6 and goes until about 7.30. And um, for those families who just get off work and think, well, how are we going to um, get food prepared and eat and get to the library at 6 o'clock, this helps them because they don't have to worry about it. They can just come to the library, spend a half an hour eating. It gives them a time to talk with the other families, bond with the other families, and that makes prime time an even better program. That's very cool. Yeah. I like that book. <laughs> it also lets the librarians get to know the families, too, before the program starts. So it helps the bonding between the, the um, librarians and the families. Um, then we have comments from special guests. We like to invite special guests um, later on during the program because Primetime does receive a lot of funding. It receives funding from the state legislature. It receives funding from um, businesses and uh, nonprofit organizations, individuals, and we like to invite them to come see Primetime because once they see it, they, they understand it better. And we really appreciate their funding, and so we also give them a chance to talk with the families about their business or their organization. Um, as you can see down here, um, that is Senator Scott Price. <laughs> and he had a great time when he visited, and he, he had such a good time. He, participated in discussion. <laughs> and that's very important when, when the state legislature is talking about funding for the Humanities Council. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, after the comments from the special guests, we have the interactive reading and storytelling. We also have discussion over um, real life issues presented in each book, and I'll talk about that more a little bit later in the presentation. And then we have the all-important library commercial, because one of the things we want to do with primetime is to introduce these families to the resources available at the library. And so the library commercial is just what it sounds like. It's a five-minute presentation on what is available, either um, bringing in books and showing them the books and saying this is available in the library or taking them on a tour of the library, showing them the computer lab, um, different things like that each week to let them know what's available. That's so great. Yeah. What a good way to do this. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we have door prizes, which aren't a requirement, but they're fun, 
and they keep families coming back. Um, and then the people. What kind of door prizes? Books a lot. A lot of the time it's books. It's books that the libraries are, they're out of circulation and the books have a bunch of, a, a, the libraries have a bunch of books or the libraries have gone out to certain things, gone free stuff. Some libraries spend a lot of money on door prizes, some don't. Um, it's not, a, as I said, it's not a requirement. It's up to the, the site what they do with door prizes. Uh, in Lincoln, they don't even do door prizes in the, during the weeks. They just um, gather a few stuff up for the very last week and hand them out. Mm. So it's, uh, that's up to the site. And then at the very end, um, they check out books. The families get to take home books. Um, at the end of each session, and they are to read the books before the next session, and then during the next session, um, the storyteller and discussion leader will read and discuss those books. Um, and then at, at the end of the week, they bring them back to prime time. Now, prime time was developed by the Louisiana Endowment for the Humanities in 1991, and they have done, I, you can't see it there, but they've done over 400, 500 programs. Um, Nebraska became involved in primetime in 2004, and since then um, we've been doing, we've completed 62 primetime programs in 15 public libraries, five elementary schools, and two community centers, and 13 communities. And this spring we're adding our 14th community. We're going to be an alliance in, in the spring. And that map on the lower corner is um, everywhere we've been with primetime. And um, the upper map is the national expansion of primetime. It's been quite a few places in the United States. <laughs> yeah. And of all those places, Nebraska ranks fourth in how many programs we've completed. That's great. That we're, is fabulous. <laughs> we're just behind Louisiana, Cal California, and Kentucky. We well, consider our population. <laughs> yes. yeah. I think we're doing pretty good. Yes, we are doing pretty good, and and um, we're very fortunate that Nebraska is looked at as as one of the leaders in prime time. Mm -hmm. Our target audience. I've talked about this a little bit, but we're really going for families who are low income and who um, do not have a habit of reading at home with their children. They struggle with reading. They might be beginning um, in their literacy. Um, they m might have, the parents might not have completed their high school education. Um, they might not know English very well. We're looking at communities where um, student reading scores do not meet state standards because what we're trying to do is to show these families what a joy it is to read together and to discuss books together. And when you get families who that's their habit and they already know the, the program isn't, doesn't have as much impact as when you get the families who think of reading as a chore mm -hmm. and think of it as a school activity that they really don't look forward to. And primetime helps to change that. Um, we're also looking for families who haven't been in the library very much who don't know about the library, who don't know what the libraries have to offer. And so um, because of that, um, there's a lot of outreach that the libraries do the, to the communities to reach out to those, to those families who haven't been in the library. I was going to ask, how do you get them to come? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll talk about that a little bit. When the Humanities Council was looking at a literacy program back in 2003 and 2004, um, and we found prime time. We wanted to use it to to reach out to the community that needed it the most. And so we did a lot of research into graduation rates and um, and what and and just the population in Nebraska. And what we've discovered, what we what we discovered then, and what we're still discovering now, is that Nebraska is one of 13 new growth states. And what that means is that we have a really large immigration immigrant population. Mm. Um, anywhere you go in Nebraska, you, you'll, you'll probably see that, that there's a lot of Spanish-speaking workers. Um, we are getting refugees from Africa. Mm -hmm. um, we're getting um, refugees from Asia. And because of that, then, um, in our schools, 
um, ELL, English Language Learning, has grown by 227%, has tripled um, in, in 10 years between 1995 and 2005. And that, that's a, a big population. Um, we've also discovered um, through, through studies that 64% of immigrant children have parents who struggle with English and 40% of parents 40% of those um, children have parents who never finished high school. And when you're thinking about how well children do in school, they really need a support system um, from their family. And children who, have, who are from families who don't speak English very well, who, who don't read books, they really struggle in school. And there's been studies that have shown that the, the children who do better in school are the ones who can read, or read, <laughs> read and write, <laughs> combining <laughs> together, <laughs> and speak English well. <laughs> the children who can read, write, and speak English well um, do the best. And also um, those who have parents who support them in their efforts to, to finish high school. And, and prime time helps helps with that um, in several ways. Um, looking at the graduation rates, these are these are graduation rates. Um, this says a 2007 report, but it's actually from I think 2004. Mm -hmm. This data's from 2004, and these are from Nebraska. Um, Hispanics and Latinos, um, their graduation rate is 53.8 percent, and that's actually risen since. 2004 when we were at first looking at graduation rates. So they've been doing better in Nebraska. And I'd like to say that's because of prime time. I'm not sure we can well, see that. It may not be a direct relationship, but you know, <laughs> I'm sure it's part it's of it. It's nice to see. And it's something you hear a lot more about that people are realizing there's a community that needs help from lots of different organizations. Mm -hmm. So I think everybody together is get is really targeting them and mm -hmm. helping. Yeah, and there's been a, you're right. There's been a lot of organizations that have been focusing on them. Mm -hmm. Um, we still have a low graduation rate for blacks and African Americans, 47%. And then our American Indian population is at 35%. And for whites and Caucasians, it's 84.5%. Um, we have been trying to address this through prime time. Um, in 2005, we started a bilingual prime time. And the bilingual prime time is in both English and Spanish. And we're targeting our Spanish speaking families. Um, and all reading is done in, in English and Spanish, and all discussion is done in English and Spanish. And to go back to the parents who struggle with English, um, they have commented in surveys that they really like the bilingual format, because not only do they understand then the discussion and they understand what their children are doing, but it also helps them with their English. Mm -hmm. And it gives them an opportunity to practice their English. And it's really exciting when um, a Spanish-speaking parent tries to answer a question in English or when they come over to me when I'm there and I start speaking to them in Spanish and they start speaking to me in English and it's just a nice <laughs> little exchange. Um, and so they do like that, that it is in English and Spanish because it helps them with their English. And do all the people who work in the primetime program speak Spanish then? Not all of them. In the bilingual program? Not all of them. Um, we always have someone who is fluent in Spanish. Mm -hmm. You absolutely have to have someone. Right. And the storyteller discussion leader um, team who is fluent in Spanish. We often have other team members who are fluent in Spanish. We also have people who don't know Spanish very well, who ah. might not know Spanish at all, who are just fluent in English. And I think it's good to have those people on the team, too, because it reminds Spanish speakers, hey, let's keep the English language in prime time. Let's not just mm -hmm. do a Spanish language prime time. Let's keep the English, because that's important in, this, in these bilingual it prime is times. bilingual. Yeah. Right, exactly. Um, prime time has two goals. And the first goal is to introduce families to reading. We do this by encouraging parents and children to bond through reading and learning together. Um, there are families. I uh, love this photograph, Erica. <laughs> is this one of your real photographs or is this a stock photo? No, this is a real one. This is from Lincoln. This is from Isley Branch Library in Lincoln. I love it. 
I've, I've talked with parents who, who don't get this because this is what they do with their children. Mm -hmm. And they don't understand that for some families this just isn't a habit. Mm -hmm. um, but for some families, they, they don't think of it as a habit to sit down with their children and read to them. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of our goals for prime time. And that's why we need to stick with a target audience. Um, we demonstrate to parents how they can read aloud to their children because some of them don't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. And they don't know how to really get their children involved with the story. Um, we teach them how to discuss um, important issues using the books as a backdrop. Um, a lot of the times, even, even for parents who, who make it a habit to read to their children, they might stick you know, they might stick with the questions that are um, just the details of the story about what so-and-so did and what so-and-so was doing. And we really dive into the issues of the story. Why did somebody do this? And what would you have done if you were in this situation? We teach families how to select books. Um, we tell them what all those award stickers on their books mean and um, how to select books by looking at what awards, the Caldecott Award, for instance. Um, we try to foster love for reading, and we try to, and by doing this, we encourage high academic expectations because reading and writing and talking about books is so important when you're in school. We have, Primetime is centered around many different themes. We have um, a lot of different books under a lot of different themes, and each week of primetime, you have one theme and two or three books around that theme. And these are some of the themes we use. We talk about fairness and justice. We talk about greed and generosity, determination, courage. Courage is a big theme when, you, when you're talking about a bilingual primetime um, because some of these families that have immigrated to the United States have had a to have a lot of courage and determination mm -hmm. to, to get here. And they talk about um, their dreams, why they came to the United States, um, what, what their children want for their own future. And then the parents also talk to their children about what they had wanted um, when they were children. We talk about um, what it means to be family and what it means to be loyal. We talk about identity and um, and how you react to differences and how you react to others. Um, on a previous slide, we were talking about the graduation rates, and I forgot to, to talk about something. When we don't just do the bilingual primetime anymore. We used to just do bilingual primetime. Hmm. But because this has reached out to such a great need, um, we also do um, a primetime for African Americans, which is English only. And we are now developing a prime time for American Indians, which we are um, piloting this fall in Scotts Bluff. That would be very cool. Yeah. <laughs> Is that going to um, address the bilingual issues in the Native American community? or um, Not right now. It'll be English only. It'll be well. in English only as well. Right. Yeah, that would be really good to do a bilingual one. That would be so cool. But, of course, it, it would depend on being able to find the right people to work with. Right, who know the language, language. Yeah. because those children have lost their language, and um, the tribes are struggling to keep their language going. So yeah, that is definitely a need. Wow, these are some good numbers. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> at every prime time, we ask the families to complete an uh, entry survey on the very first week of prime time. And then we do a completion survey during the last week of prime time. And then 90 days after um, prime time, we give them a call to see how they're doing and ask them questions. And so these are the results um, of goal one. After participating in prime time, do you read with your child more often? And um, at the sixth week of prime time, 90% said that, yes, they read with their child more often. We think, well, of course, because they're bringing home books every week for the six weeks, and this is what, they're, uh, what they've been doing. And so 90 days later, we ask them, are you reading with your child more often now after prime time? And 85% said, yes, we are. And that's great. And we have, we have other questions on the survey um, because we don't want these surveys to reflect what they, 
what the families think we want to hear. Um, and so we have other questions too, and all of those questions reflect that this is this is correct, that they, they do read more often with their children after prime time. Mm -hmm. Has prime time changed the way you and your child read and discuss books? Um, because we're trying to show them how to read and interact with the child while reading, you know, the read aloud techniques. And also, we want them to discuss those real life issues they find in the books. And so we're, we're measuring here if they're, if they're reading and discussing differently. And um, during the six week of prime time, 88% said, yes, we do read differently and we discuss differently. And then 90 days later, 82%. And so that's, that's really encouraging, I think. Are there any questions so far? If you have questions, mm -hmm. you can either use your microphone or mm -hmm. you can type in the question category. I'm monitoring it, yep. <laughs> Which Krista is monitoring. <laughs> so she will pass along those questions that come up in the question <coughs> category typed in right away to Erica. <laughs> Real time. Well, if there's no questions, we'll move right on now. to goal number two, introducing families to libraries. Because as I said, these families um, aren't very familiar with the libraries. Our target audience, they're not very familiar with it. Um, back in 2006, I believe, we had a focus group in South Omaha. And one of the questions we asked them are, are Hispanics and Latinos afraid to use the library? And the parents said, yes, they are. Yes, they are afraid. They're afraid of not being understood because when you go into the library, there's not a lot of Spanish-speaking librarians. Mm -hmm. Like something the libraries need to work on for their own staff. Yeah, they have mm -hmm. been. Yeah, they have been. But um, and that the double fear is not only will they not be understood, but they won't be able to find what they need, and they're they're not familiar with the librarian, so they don't feel like they can approach the librarian. And so, what prime time? Um, what Primetime's goal is, is to show the families that the libraries are safe. Um, these families are coming from cultures where government buildings are very scary. And even in the United States, when they're immigrants, and um, when there's a lot of questions about illegal immigration, government buildings are very scary. And mm. they think of libraries as government buildings, and so they want to stay away. But through primetime, with the librarians actively involved in talking with the families during, during dinner and presenting the library commercials, those families start to get to know the librarians. And the librarians, after the six weeks, they become more approachable. They become mentors. And even if there is a language gap, at least, at least the families know your face. Mm -hmm. They know your face. They know you're nice. <laughs> they know you're not going to fuss at them. Um, and so you, you become, the librarian becomes more approachable. Um, and then the families realize that libraries are safe places to go, that they're not a scary place. They also find out the libraries are free, because in their countries, the libraries are not free. They have to pay. And they're for the elite. They're for the rich folks. And so they need to break through that misunderstanding and, and get to know that libraries are free, that they can check out materials. I love this picture. If you, you might not be able to see, that's Pat Leach with the big oh, yeah, glasses middle. on. <laughs> and Vicki. <laughs> and Vicki. Yeah, they're doing a library commercial, by the way. Um, they're doing a commercial on what you can and cannot get at the library. And, and the big glasses are things you cannot check out at the library, and the books that Vicki is holding are the things you can check out at the library. <laughs> it's like Pat Leach is carrying a dog. You can't check out this dog at the library. <laughs> she might very well be. I think she has a bag in her hand. Has prime time changed your family's attitude towards the library? Um, 60 days, not 60 days, but during the sixth week of prime time, 75% said yes that their attitude had changed. And 73% 90 days later said yes. And um, I do want to make a little note about, and these, these percentages are actually pretty good. Um, our benchmark yeah. is 74%. And so it just meets it. Um, 
And it's also very good when you consider that some of these prime times are being held in public schools or community centers. They're not being held in the public library. Um, we have higher percentages from prime times that are actually held in the library. The one the library partners with a school who is holding prime time or partners with a community center, then that helps raise the percentages too because that librarian, even though they're not holding prime time in their library, they're still involved in the library commercials. And so that helps introduce the families to the library. And also prime time that's being held in schools, I often encourage them to maybe do their last week in the library. Take a tour of the library mm -hmm. so they can see what's there. This is great outreach for libraries. So there are several essential components. To, there's a lot of optional things and a lot of things that, that are necessary to do prime time. Um, one thing we need, and we were just talking about that before the session. Where do you put all the books? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know they rotate around from place to place, mm -hmm. but there have got to be a lot of them sitting in your office sometimes. Yeah, yep. As I said, there are, you use five themes, and you either, either have two books or three books per theme. You get 30 copies of each title. And so that's a lot of books you get. So is 30 about the max number of families that you could possibly work with then? Well, we, we try to keep it at 30 because if you get more than 30 families, it gets unwieldy. Yeah. It's hard to do a discussion when you have that many people. Um, and so that's, and you don't get to keep them. They're actually being borrowed from the, live, from the Nebraska Humanities Council. So the Humanities Council sends site and lets you borrow um, all of these books, and then we pay for the shipping to send them to you and to send them back to us. But um, I try to keep, I try to expand with new themes and new books each year because if you've done prime time for four years, five years, and you've done it twice a year, um, you need new things to talk about. Can you give us an example of what the themes might be? Like just example. Well, the one of the newest themes I added just this summer is identity. Who am I? Mm -hmm. um, I have included Stella Luna yeah. in that uh, because with Stella mm -hmm. Luna, and actually Stella Luna um, fits both of the, my new themes. I have identity and encountering, the, encountering others. How do you respond to differences? Because mm -hmm. with Stella Luna in the book, um, she's doing both of that. She's trying to figure out who she is because she is a bat who has lost her mother, she's landed in this bird's nest, and she's been being raised by birds. And so she has this identity crisis. Uh -huh. Is she a bat or is she a bird? <laughs> and so she fits really well in both themes because you can talk about her struggle to figure out who she is, but you can also, you can also talk about responding to differences because she's responding to the birds and the bird's ability to fly during the day. Mm -hmm and eat worms, <laughs> and the birds are responding to her ability to hang upside down and fly at night because they can't see at night. Um, and so that is, that's an example of the, of the themes in the, in the books. Um, we also have um, in Encountering Others Going Someplace Special, which is about an African-American girl during segregation, and she's trying to get to the library because the library is a safe place to go. And all the places around her aren't safe mm. because it's still in the South and it's still during segregation. And she's trying to make her way to the library, which is a safe place for her to go. It's a special place for her. The storyteller and the discussion leader are absolutely essential. These are people who I hire. I, con I contract with them um, in order to make sure primetime remains its quality. And they're two different people. They're two different people. Um, the storyteller um, and the discussion leader. And during a bilingual prime time, one or both of them must be fluent in Spanish. And if one isn't fluent in Spanish, that's okay because it, they can nudge the fluent one and say, "Hey, what does what do you mean? You know, can you re can you repeat that in English?" And that way, we keep prime time bilingual. Um, we have a preschool coordinator for younger siblings. This is very important, once again, for breaking down the barriers, as I said. Um, we break down barriers by providing a meal. We provide um, a preschool coordinator for the younger siblings who are ages three to five, who are too restless for prime time. 
but who would still benefit from pre-reading activities. Um, and we also provide transportation for those families. Maybe they have one car and their car is being used by the mother or the father for a night job. And so how do they get to prime time? Well, we provide transportation. Either we um, pay for a van or some libraries contract with, um, with taxi companies. And so through our funding, they're able to pay for the taxi. We already talked about the meals and publicity materials. How do you get the families to know? Um, the Nebraska Humanities Council will ship each site um, paper, um, stationery, so they can um, um, print out their brochures and flyers on primetime. But with the bilingual primetime, keep in mind that that is the least best way. <laughs> that's, not a good, that's not a very good way at all to attract an audience. You really have to go word of mouth with the um, Spanish-speaking families. The certificates are um, for certificates of completion and certificates of appreciation. You can give your funders. And you're not going to go all this alone. <laughs> you're not going to do all this alone because we do have a pretty thick site support manual that Louisiana provides to us. And so every new site coordinator, I give them a site support manual, answers all their questions, and I'm also available. I go to a new site. I sit with um, the new site coordinator for a couple hours, and we just go through the steps for impl implementing primetime. So you're not going through this alone. Plus, we do training workshops and idea exchanges. We haven't had one in a while. Um, one is being um, planned. But that's when everyone who's involved in primetime in Nebraska, anyone who's available, gets together in one spot. We train the new people. And the people who have been around primetime for a while get together, exchange ideas with the new people, exchange ideas with, with each other. And so we have a lot of cross-pollination, I guess, <laughs> among the primetime sites. Do you do any of that on a webinar like this, or is it all live in person? We would like to do it live in person just so they get to know each other. They, mm -hmm. We've had a lot of success stories, and, um, and I've heard a lot of stories from other primetime discussion leaders or storytellers or site coordinators about how they remember so-and-so from su such place because mm -hmm. they brought this wonderful homemade salsa, stuff like that. <laughs> and so you get a really good support system throughout the state when you've, when you've actually met each other. Um, I also implemented something new um, last year where I will I have traditionally traveled to each site for one week mm. and that's another way I support site mm. sites is that I visit every prime time for one week and um, let you know how things are going I ask you how things are going if you have questions or concerns we try to talk those through I let you know this is what you're doing great this is what you can work on and now um, someone else a guest evaluator comes with me and it's a um, either a site coordinator or a storyteller or a discussion leader who has not worked with the site I'm visiting, who comes and gives their experience. And so it's sort of a mini idea exchange, and that's worked very well. That's a great idea. It's a lot of fun. That is a great idea because that really enriches the site visit to have a guest evaluator involved. And I do have a question here okay. about your, um, I guess it's, idea exchanges. Mm -hmm. um, do coordinators from other states communicate with each other about books, themes, and new ideas? So the other states that are doing this talk to each other. There is an avenue to do that, yes. Mm -hmm. um, there is a listserv, a national listserv, that once be you become a primetime team member, mm -hmm. you get put on this listserv. So if you have questions about primetime, you can post them on the listserv, and then you get answers from all over the nation. That's good to hear how like, people are doing things on the other side of the country yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a big national reunion, which would be <laughs> I was, very fun. I was wondering fun. about that, too. Is there like a, like a, everyone gets to go to New Orleans or something? <laughs> we, Louisiana. <laughs> there are national trading workshops, but those are for people who are new to primetime. Oh. And um, we have sent a few people to Louisiana to be trained, but what happens is that um, Nebraska has developed different forms and different procedures oh, sure. yeah. than Louisiana because primetime 
is not a one size fits all sort of program. Mm -hmm. It what what works in Omaha doesn't always work in Scotts Bluff even, mm -hmm. and what works in Louisiana doesn't work in in Nebraska. And one example of that is that in Louisiana, prime time was developed for the libraries because their primary audience was African Americans. Mm -hmm. African Americans did not trust their schools, but they trusted their libraries. Oh, interesting. And so that's how prime time became for libraries. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about Spanish speaking families, as I as I mentioned, they don't trust their libraries at all, mm -hmm. but they trust their schools. Mm -hmm. So you've got to kind of tweak it. Yeah. Right. And that's why it's uh, um, partnering with a school, even if you're a library and you're doing it in the library, um, getting a liaison from the school is priceless. Mm -hmm. It really helps with your recruitment. Who is the storyteller I keep talking about? We have lots of storytellers throughout the state. This That's happens, a great photograph. <laughs> this happens to be Ricardo Garcia, who was our um, one of our first primetime storytellers. Actually, he was our first one in, in Lincoln in 2004. Now, storytellers have a broad knowledge of children's literature. Um, they're comfortable working with non-traditional audiences. Um, they demonstrate storytelling and read aloud techniques. Um, and this is really important. They're comfortable sharing the stage. If you know Ricardo, you know he's a professional storyteller. And um, sometimes with professional storytellers, they're not used to sharing the stage with, with anybody. Unfortunately for us, Ricardo is very comfortable with sharing a stage. Um, Children's librarians make really good storytellers for prime time. Oh, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Elementary yeah, school teachers make, make good storytellers for prime time. Um, the storyteller needs to be a good listener because prime time is not about the performance. It's not about the storyteller. It's about the audience and the discussion and what they have to offer to prime time. And of course, you have to have fun. You have mm -hmm. to have fun at prime time. Prime time is not a stoic brownie place. It's a fun place. The discussion leader has an advanced degree in the humanities field. Now in Louisiana, this is once again a not a um, one-size-fits-all because in Louisiana you have to have a PhD. Oh, wow. Well, if okay. you get to western Nebraska, <laughs> PhDs become a little hard to find. And so we have um, we have been a little bit more flexible in who can be a discussion leader. Um, either if they have a master's degree or just a college degree, as long as they um, show the other requirements of being a discussion leader. They must be eager to transmit a love of reading and talking about books um, and be enthusiastic about it. They need to be comfortable working with an intergenerational at-risk audience. And this is especially important when you get a professor who is um, being a discussion leader. Mm. They need to be working with children and adults who are not the general audience that they see at their college. They need to be comfortable asking open-ended questions because primetime is not a right or wrong program. It's, um, and, and that's because of the questions we're asking. Who sure. are you? What would you do? Who is family? Um, what does loyalty mean? What is greed? Those aren't closed-ended questions. Those, those don't have a right or wrong answer. And those are the kind of primetime questions we want. And the discussion leader needs to become very, very adept and very comfortable doing that. And then they have to be a good listener because um, a discussion leader might have all of their questions planned out. They might want to go this way. But if something really good comes out of one of those, you know, a mom or a dad mm -hmm. or a child, you got to run with it. Yes. You, Key you, facilitation <laughs> skills. Yeah. Not not doing a lecture. <laughs> yeah, you're not do, you're not on a soapbox. You tr the the best prime time is when you can throw out a question and then step back because the families are going at it mm -hmm. and they're bouncing off each other and that's kind of difficult to do with families who are really shy and who might not know each other very well. But if you can get them going and if you've had if you have some families in the group who've been involved in prime time a couple times, they're used to it. Um, and so you do have repeat performance. We do have repeats. Come back. Yeah. yeah. That's and, wonderful. That's good success. And I don't discourage repeats. Mm -hmm. That's great success. I don't discourage them because in the very first few weeks when the families don't know what 
they're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Have families there who know what they're supposed to be doing is very helpful and encouraging. Yeah, we do have repeats. In fact, we do have a statistic on that. 60% of families are brand new to prime time and 40% are have coming back. Coming back. Great. So if you are interested in being a site, um, this is what sites do. And this is the librarian in the site or usually is a site coordinator? Um, yeah. 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 The, the program coordinator or site coordinator is most of the time the director of the library or the branch. Most of the time. Sometimes it's a children's librarian. Um, but this is a big job. Getting prime time ready is a big job. And so if a library director is too busy or needs a little help, we have, um, we have some help available. If a library wants to hire out and get a program coordinator who's not from the library, we can help fund that. But a lot of the times the librarians like to keep it within their library and mm -hmm. plan it out themselves. Um, Networking with community agencies, because as, as I said, a lot of this target family is um, not comfortable with coming into the library. So you have to go out. What are compadres? Compadres are the people who those families trust. They're literacy agencies. Mm -hmm. They're school liaisons, ELL teachers, um, anybody in the community who those families go to. Those are compadres. And getting them involved in prime time is incredibly important. Um, recruiting volunteers because a lot goes on during prime time, and it, it's very helpful to have a lot of different volunteers. And then, obviously, to introduce the library resources. Providing a, sta providing a staff member to serve as coordinator, providing nutritious meals, arranging transportation. Identifying the preschool coordinator and identifying other team members. Now, who are those other team members? I'm going to talk about them a little bit. As I said, prime time is a big job for just one person to do. And so a, it's very smart for a program coordinator to um, bring a team on to help with them with the different tasks. And back in 2005, I was in this very room. <laughs> the table was situated a little bit differently, but I was giving a presentation on prime time. I think it was Mary Jo, <laughs> Good <man. laughs> who said, is there an opportunity that maybe student interns could be involved with prime time? <laughs> and certainly. And so we've been doing this for five years now. We've had um, the opportunity for libraries to have a student intern. And this is for public libraries only. We don't offer these to elementary schools. We just offer these for the, to the libraries. Um, it's a 55 to 60 hour internship. The Nebraska Humanities Council pays the intern. Um, we ask for a high school or lower level college student, somebody who doesn't quite know what career path they're going to choose. Um, we, and we, we ask for a student intern who's within the who's a member of the target audience. So if it's a bilingual prime time, we want an intern from a Spanish-speaking family. If it's an African-American prime time, let's do an intern that's African-American. Um, and that's because of the goal, the, the last bullet point there, is to encourage minority students to consider a library career. Nice little side effect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We've had some great results from that, too. Some yeah. great comments have come from those students saying how much they understand library work now mm -hmm. versus before. Mm -hmm. right? And, you know, we've had some really good success stories with student interns. We had um, Scott's Bluff had the very first student intern, and she brought her family along to see primetime, and the whole family fell in love with it. The mother became a volunteer. She started helping out. Even when her daughters were too old for primetime, she was still helping out. And now she is the primetime storyteller for Scott's Bluff. Nice. So, very good. It's worked out very well. Um, student intern helps with prime time work, but they also help with general library work because we want them to get to know what it's like to work in a library. And I, I must thank the Nebraska Library Commission for the initial funding to, <laughs> to keep that going. Um, Happy to do it. <laughs> 
but even with the student intern, sometimes it was a little bit too much work for the program coordinator, especially when it came to recruiting families and trying to get inside, um, inside that target audience. And so the community liaison was born in Nebraska, and this wasn't a new idea. The student intern is unique to Nebraska. No, one, no other state in the nation has a student intern for prime time. Um, the community liaison Nebraska was a little slow <laughs> getting one in, as part of the team. Uh, but we, we do now fund a community liaison. It's an insider to Primetime's target audience. And they work to recruit the families um, because the families trust them. They know mm -hmm. them already. And so it's a little less work for the librarian to, to break into that. And the libra librarians had told me how difficult it was. They would go to a church to try to get flyers out. And because they don't go to that church, mm -hmm. they might not be able to see the pastor. Or you know, they talk to the pastor, and then maybe their flyers didn't get distributed. But if you have an insider, it becomes a lot easier. Um, community liaison makes phone calls. Um, primetime sites will send reminder phone calls to the family each week to remind them to come. And they also agree to check in. It's a friendly face when those families get to the library and they come to the, the check in table. It's very nice to see someone they know. Now, is this a volunteer or is this a contract position? Erica? It's a contract position. We do pay the community liaison. The Nebraska Humanities Council does. And I should say that this prime time um, can be done so it does not cost the library anything. Hmm. That it could be completely covered by um, the, the Nebraska Humanities Council unless you spend money on door prizes, which we don't cover, mm -hmm. or if you spend money on preschool um, supplies, which we don't cover. You don't require a match then? No. From the libraries? No. Nope. Except all the work. Except all the work. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah, the work. <laughs> the in kind is yeah. quite a match. Yeah. Uh, but that's, that's another barrier, though. Um, prime times have limit. Oh, not prime times. Libraries have limited budgets. Schools have limited budgets. Mm -hmm. And at first, we were going going to have them pay for seventy five percent of prime time, then fifty percent. And by we were hoping to wean them off the Humanities Council funding. Mm -hmm. What we found was that the libraries were scared of that because they weren't weren't they were wouldn't be able to fund prime time mm -hmm. without Humanities Council support. And because we do receive state funding, this is why state funding is so important to the Nebraska Humanities Council. One of the reasons, there's several reasons, but one of the reasons is it allows us to provide prime time to libraries that could not otherwise afford it. That's very important to very small um, libraries as well. Volunteers um, can help with um, circulating book bags, keeping track of the books registering participants as they come in, donating and preparing the food. Some of you might be wondering, well, where do we get all this food? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the Nebraska Humanities Council um, pays for food up to $1,200. So you can order from Hy-Vee. You, you can get a donation from Runza, maybe um, go to a local restaurant, go to a local grocery store. Um, some sites have had incredible luck with one week as a potluck where the families oh, bring nice. food. And that's a lot. I haven't been to one of those yet. I really want to go. Um, but that's an idea for a week. Probably not the first week. No, no, not the first week. That's usually around the fifth or the sixth week when all the families know each other by mm -hmm. now. And, um, and then the preschool program activities. That preschool coordinator needs help. <laughs> rounding up the children and so usually two or three volunteers to help the preschool. Oh, we actually had a question about the preschool program. Sure. Now, I know you'd mentioned it before but maybe not in detail. The question was are you planning on developing a program especially I guess I mean just for preschool mm -hmm. age? That isn't this what you're talking about generally part of the program for the older yeah. children? Prime time is for children ages six to ten. Mm -hmm. um, preschool is for three to five we do not have a separate program for ages three to five. We've talked about it, though. We've mm -hmm. talked about developing it. Yeah. It's not even in the development stage yet. <laughs> <laughs> but you do do something for them when they come along with their older siblings. So right. That they're not, like, left out. Or, oh, yes. So also for the families, they don't have to, like, say, well, I can't because little one needs to be right. watched. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There's always going to be a preschool program. Um, and we do have act, um, 
guidelines for activities. Mm -hmm. There is a preschool coordinator handbook with ideas um, based on the different themes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we like for the preschool coordinators to use one of the books that the other families have been discussing so that when everyone goes home, the older kids, the adults, and the, and the, little, and the smaller children have all been thinking about the same book, right. but in different levels. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe the children ha um, were read the book and then they did a craft, mm -hmm. they did an activity related to the book. Cool. Did that answer that question? I think so. It was from oh, our So staff. if you have another question about the preschool program, be sure and type it in if we yes, didn't give you what you were wondering about. Some more statistics about primetime. 100% of families who attend primetime at libraries have library cards by the sixth week. Why Yay. do you think that is? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's part of the library commercial. Absolutely. <laughs> That very first week, you hand out, if they don't have library cards, you hand out applications. And sometime during prime time, either the second week or the third week, they get their library card. <laughs> That's why. Um, before attending prime time in 2009, 31% of families reported that they used the public library three or more times per month. 90 days after, the statistic jumped to 62%. It doubled. Mm -hmm. That shows that. Um, they're still going to the library even after prime time. And we talked about repeats. 98% want more family activities like prime time. They either want to go to prime time or they would like the library to do more activities like it. Um, one thing I want to say about our surveys, especially our um, completion surveys, is that we do include questions that are specifically for the library um, we ask, what library resources do you use? What would you like the library to do? And so the, hopefully the libraries get back some useful information that they can use, as well as the Nebraska Humanities Council gets back information we use so that we can do statistics like this. I love that. I thought it was more difficult to go to the library and boring. And boring. <laughs> That's terrific. I like this picture up there, up here. It's it's not very clear because I, I I'm not a good photographer and I didn't get a good shot. That little girl has a Doberman puppy in her lap. Oh wow! <laughs> so it's not just for families, it's for puppies too. <laughs> At least the whole family's involved. This little boy over here is holding a packet. And I haven't talked about this yet. Um, at the very end at the, of the sixth week, we have um, a graduation ceremony, an award ceremony, what, whatever, it, whatever you want to call it. It's not really very much pomp and circumstance, but what it is is that we give those certificates of completion and we also give a gift book for the families to take home and keep. Because throughout these six weeks or five weeks, We've been giving them books to bring mm -hmm. home, but they have to bring them back right. because they don't belong to them. They don't belong to the library. They belong to the Nebraska Humanities Council. But when they get through the, the, the primetime program, they get to take home this book. And it's not just a book. Um, you might not be able to see in that picture very well. It's a, it's a bag with a book. It has laminated discussion questions and a family activity. And so they can take that home, and it continues what they've been learning through prime time. They can read the book, talk about the book with those discussion questions, mm -hmm. and then have a little family activity to do together. So that little boy is pretty excited yeah. about Taffy the I Penguin. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> the look on his face cool. is just like, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> These are great quotes. Yeah. And this is a pretty long quote from Lincoln. I think it's pretty good, though. It's from Pat Leach, who was the coordinator of Primetime in Lincoln before she became the director of Lincoln City Libraries. 
and she's talking about the impact of prime time on the parents who don't have a lot of opportunity to mm -hmm. get together and have this kind of conversation. Mm -hmm. And Sassy City, that's a quote from um, the library director who's now in Yankton. Um, she was very skeptical about primetime when we began. Really? <laughs> and by the end of that first night, she was hooked. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I have to share. I'm sure I have a lot more to say, but that's the end of my PowerPoint. I guess one question I would have, Erica, is are you looking for more libraries in Nebraska to sign up for, for prime time or is it pretty well we are up? always looking for more sites um, if we went back to that that fourth slide with the, um, I don't know how to do that with the with the state I would love to get more of those open spots filled with prime time um, there is a mm -hmm. there's a way to apply to prime time if you go to our website www.nebraskahumanities.org and go to our maybe we can go there do we have a little bit of time to get to our website? I'm um, sure we have like a couple of minutes. Okay. We started a little late, so we have a well, Okay. Minutes. If you want to, let's see. Can, okay. can you bring the up the, I can do is, yeah. Over here, right here. And here. And nope. There we go. And nope. now you can go okay. to it. <laughs> so any library in Nebraska, any public library in Nebraska that's interested in potentially having the opportunity to, to take part in the primetime program, they could go to www.nebraskahumanities.org. And when they get there, it looks like this. Yeah. Oh. And then where do you go? Go to programs. And I see primetime family reading time. Oh, and there's that there's same that picture. Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. It gets double good. <laughs> Um, and then there's a form, is that a? Yeah. Ah, okay. Here's some information. Yeah, information on how to, how, what is prime time, how to become a prime time site. And there's the application. Okay. You need to complete the application, send it in to me. I will be looking to see if you're going to be reaching an, our target audience, an mm -hmm. audience that... Um, either bilingual, either bilingual, African American, yeah. or Native American. That's right. Who, and, and you know, I'll be looking at um, your community's state reading scores um, mm -hmm. to see if if that shows any struggle in meeting the state standards. Mm -hmm. And but, how about demographics? If you have changing demographics mm -hmm. in a community, census data, I assume census data. Right. Yep, yep. And I, I, we do ask questions about. Um, how about if somebody just wants to talk to you? Should they? Call the Humanities Council just to visit with you about yeah, it? Yeah, calling me is the best. <laughs> it's 402-474-2131. And I say calling is best because if you email me, I give a lot of emails and my emails just stack up. They do, don't they? <laughs> and so, and I like to talk to people. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of a voice-to-voice -voice person sure. when, when I'm talking about <laughs> that stuff. So I like, I like to talk over the phone about, you know, if you have any questions, if you have any concerns. Is there any particular area of Nebraska that you're seeking libraries in, or are you just open to wherever? Um, well, right now with our new American Indian primetime, we are seeking American Indian, you know, communities that have a lot of Native Americans, maybe reservation libraries. Mm -hmm. um, but as mm -hmm. I said, if there is a need in a community, we are open to that. Mm -hmm. Great. And do you have a deadline? that you want to we, hear from people by. Yeah, we don't really have any strict deadlines. Um, you cannot apply in March and have an April program. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that would make sense. There will be yes. some time <laughs> yeah. so I do need to train. <laughs> and keep in mind, I do need to train the side coordinator. I do need to locate a storyteller. I do need to locate a discussion leader. Mm -hmm. And if you're in a community that's pretty removed from another primetime community, I will be working with the, um, the applicant to try to identify a storyteller and discussion leader mm -hmm. because the best, the, the best people to help me find the storyteller and discussion leader is the people who are, know the community already sure. rather than me trying to cold call somebody. That makes the most sense, yeah. of course. Is, do you have 
contact information on here? Up like at the where? top, I think. Oh, right. no, I thought I saw it. Well, up here, there. Yeah. There, is that the phone okay. number for you, too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and that's, yeah. There it is, 474-2131. I'm always happy to talk to, to communities who are interested in prime time. There's a lot of other good things on this website. It looks like there's a radio program from NET and yeah. get your book list. So, yeah, we had talked lots about of resources. Maybe I, if we have a little bit, I'll show you kind of what books we have. We have. Oh, there's some great books on here. We have different tracks with different themes. So, if you're interested in an African American. Um, prime time. This is. These are the. And these are not actually all of our books because I've done that expansion and that's not included on here. Um, if you want to do a prime time on animal tales, we have so <laughs> many books. Oh yeah, yeah. about animals. Um, well, we learn so much from animal stories. And I, as I said, our Native American um, collection has increased too since this was put on online. And then, of course, our, because we've been doing bilingual primetime longer, we have a much longer list of all of our books. Oh, wow. Okay, sounds good. Looks like, um, do we have any further questions? Um, go back to the main page. We have that as your final further contact okay. info. Oh, just, oh. Uh, the tab, the second tab. Which second yeah. tab? <laughs> what is going on here? I see where this we're going. The oh, there we go. Oh, okay. There you go. That's got contact information on it. Yep. So any other questions from anybody in the audience? I want to thank Erica Hamilton from the Nebraska Humanities Council for joining us here today and well, telling us all about franchise family <laughs> reading time. Well, thank you, Mary Jo, for inviting me. <laughs> this has been yeah. fun. This is a great program. I hope some libraries will listen in and um, get involved with it more and see yeah. what's going on out in their communities. Um, so thank you very much for attending today. Um, the session was recorded and will be available yeah, later today, tomorrow. We'll put it out there as we usually do. Um, the PowerPoint will be posted online as well, so all those slides went through. You'll be able to download and take a look at them, and um, the link to the Humanities Council website will also be put on there as well. So you don't have to worry about scribbling down all that. And these slides going. would be great to show to your library board. Oh, yeah. I think you could follow right along just mm -hmm. like Erica did and show these to your library board. And There'd be some yeah, enthusiasm. A <laughs> lot of great <laughs> info in there, yeah. Really good. Uh, Laura from um, San Francisco, thank you. Oh. Thanks for the presentation. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Um, we hope you'll join us next week when our topic, what will our topic be? Oh, our Conducting Surveys 3, Analyzing Data and Reporting Methods. This is the third in our three-part series that um, Catherine Brockmeyer here at the Library Commission is doing on um, doing surveys. Another um, great program so, from Catherine Brockmeyer on, yeah. on conducting They're surveys. I know popular. everybody's been yep. enjoying those. And part one and two are already on. Um, the recordings are up, so if you need to get prepared for the part three that's coming next week, you can go online and watch those. Wonderful. Cool. So thank you very much, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>